Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now talk politics and today in history. On this day in history, the 23rd of February in 2019, Nigerians went to poll to vote in a new president. The election was originally scheduled for a week ago, and that was for February 16th. But on the day of that election, I think at around 3 a.m., the Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, announced that the polls had been postponed by a week and they cited logistical challenges in getting electoral materials to the polling stations in time. Eventually, uh, voting turnout was recorded at just about 30% or so, and that was for about uh, uh, just a few votes. There was voter apathy. Not many people were very happy about that because we had complaints that many people had traveled from several states to where they had to vote because there were issues with all of that. And eventually the vote took place and uh, President Muhammad Buhari won. Four days later, February 27th, INEC announced that President Muhammad Buhari, who was 73 years old at the time, had won the election, defeating uh, Atiku Abubakar by over 3 million votes. He was issued a certificate of return. He was sworn in May 29th, 2019, uh, which was a former date of Nigeria's Democracy Day. There were lots of analysis about the election, you know, with the African Union and other international observers citing electoral irregularity, citing fraud, citing violence and all of that. But at the end of the day, uh, President Muhammad Buhari became what he is today, the president. But the African Union put a stamp on it saying the election was largely peaceful yeah. and conducive. But the, the big issue there is that there was voter apathy and not many people voted yeah, as they should have. 30-something 30, 30 percent, yes. um, you know, voter. Um, but of course, you know, that was, you know, the um, start, you know, once again of another four years of uh, the current administration. Um, and of course, um, you know, there's still some time, you know, left with the current administration to go. But uh, congratulations to the winners once again. And um, let's see how 2020, 2023 turns mm -hmm. out. Very controversial, yeah. yes. So yes. many people pulling, so many political figures in different sides saying, I want you to come forward. I want you to be president. Absolutely. I want you to run. You know, there's, I don't want to mention names, but we know these There was also the, the interesting aspect of, you know, the 2019 election, and that was the other candidates, the yes. uh, third, you know, what, what they call them, the, you know. The youth party, yeah, so the, to speak. The not too young, not too young not to exactly. run, you know, group, the Faladuro Toyes and, and the likes, you know, who also, you know, attempted in you know, that election. But it was, it was interesting seeing how it played out. Yes, and seeing how everything has, has you know, how the year and, you know, the last year, 2020, has, you know, fared regarding the NSAS protests, calling for a change of power, so to speak. We do hope that maybe this time around in the, in the next two years, Nigerian youth would come out in mass and vote for the young presidents that they've always desired, you know, wow. feeling that they needed somebody younger in that office. They didn't do so well with the votes for those set of people in 2019. But uh, yeah. maybe that might change in 2023, maybe That's not. That's how it goes, we'll you know, there's, there's a lot of factors, you know, that should make that happen or not happen, and we'll see. I'm going back to 1954, and since we're talking of vaccines and vaccinations in this, you know, day and age, we're going back to one of the very first uh, times, actually the very first time that a vaccine was used on 23 kids, and it is the polio vaccine. It was uh, developed, you know, under President uh, Roosevelt, um, who had appointed, a, a, you know, or, or rather organized a, a, a group called the March of Dimes in 1940. They were a grassroots organization, and they were founded by President Roosevelt, who, you know, of course, um, urged them and supported them to find a way to stop polio, because at that time, it was a major, major challenge across the world. Um, the group was headed um, by certain people, but there was a particular doctor, Jonas Salk, who was the head of the virus research unit in the University of Pittsburgh. Um, he, of course, uh, through his research, found that uh, the polyvirus had 125 different strains and it needed just one vaccine that was able to kill all of them uh, at that time. So after, you know, continuous work, um, he, of course, uh, found out, you know, the use of formalin, um, in developing a vaccine. The success rate at that time was about 60 to 70 percent. Uh, they had, um, you know, minor issues sometime, I think, in 1955, when one of the um, tranches of the, of the vaccine failed. And so they had to, you know, um, when they found that out, you know, they went back, did more research, 
and then of course uh, we were able to sort out that problem and then went fully into developing the vaccine. In 1955, about 4 million vaccines were given. The cases dropped from about 14,000 to 5,000 uh, in 1956. And then a later version was developed in 1962 by a guy, uh, Dr. Albert Sabin, which was swallowed instead of injected. And that's why you today have the polio vaccine that is uh, dropped in the mouth of, yeah, of babies. You can see that on your screen. Um, that was developed by Albert Sabin. And um, what that eventually was licensed in 1962. And of course, they say the rest is history. Uh, polio cases dropped as high as 99%. Um, uh, you know, um, the success rate, rather, was as high as 99%. And I think it was sometime last year that Nigeria was even, um, 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 eventually, of course, uh, declared polio free um, after many, many years of investment and funding and support from um, donor organizations mm -hmm. across the world. We eventually were able to, you know, completely kick out polio here in Nigeria. But this work started in 1940 and then in 1954, the very first um, set of vaccines were given um, in the U.S. Mm. A very, very long time ago. Wow. Um, great to see the development of science, you know, how they can apply the knowledge to health to make life better for everyone and back here in Nigeria I remember in August 2020 when you know the WHO the you know UN announced that Nigeria was no longer a polio endemic country with the last country in Africa yes. to be declared polio free that was really good because it just showed how much work that our health agencies and workers had put in because the fear and stigma around vaccination generally not even polio is terrible Okay, polio, for example, there are conspiracy theories that polio was, first of all, there are suspicions about the vaccine, the polio vaccine. They're like, you're putting something into the children's mouth. Oh, no. They lacked education. They lacked enlightenment as to what the merits of this would be. You know, because polio causes paralysis. And you see yes. lots of children, you know, paralyzed. You see lots of children, you know, having those physical challenges. But eventually they've been able to combat it. There were, there were, there were stereotypes that uh, even religious leaders opposing it saying, polio vaccination was a conspiracy against Muslim children, that vaccines will cause infertility, vaccines will cause AIDS, you so, know. So even right now with the coronavirus, you hear lots of conspiracy theories regarding the vaccine, the vaccine, that when you take the vaccine, you know, Bill Gates can control you from wherever it is. So there's just a lot to do yeah. when it comes to vaccination generally regarding information and tackling misinformation. Absolutely. So people can fully reap the benefits I did, of uh, getting that health. Um, I, I did, um, well, I started a course in communication and development uh, by UNICEF and it's one the things that he pointed out there as the challenges that um, um, organizations really have with you know in, in effecting change um, um, conspiracy theorists uh, traditions cultures and some of all of that I remember some time ago in the southeast there were um, conspiracy theorists over the Nigerian army and its own uh, social responsibility to people of the South is they, were, they also tried to do so, you know, a little vaccination then, but there was a narrative that was spread around that, you know, Nigeria was trying to kill you know, Igbo, <laughs> Igbo children and all of that. So it's one of the challenges. Oof. Good thing we wow. have some level of success. Yes. And we hope that uh, COVID-19 vaccine would also um, get that far. Take, um, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going straight into talking about electricity, telecommunications, and what Nigerians really have uh, had the biggest complaints about. Coming up next. <laughs> 